Hello everyone, my name is Leo and with this video we will share the guitar year news of the last weeks. And guys, there are pretty impressive leaks to talk about. Let's start! Universal Audio has released a new pedal in the UA FX lineup, actually the 14th pedal. This is a cabinet simulator called OX Stomp Dynamic Speaker Emulator. Basically, this is the OX box without the reactive load and in a compact pedal format. It offers 22 speaker cabinets, 6 microphones, an 1176 compressor, a plate reverb, EQ, modulation and stereo delay effects with dual, crossover and ping pong modalities that can all be edited via the UAFX control app. This pedal is fully stereo and features the Universal Audio Dynamic Speaker Modeling that emulates the speaker breakup, drive and cone cry, similarly to what a studio mic speaker cabinet should sound like. Furthermore, it offers more than 100 rigs to be coupled with your amp and for basically any genre. But no MIDI. So, 100 rigs and no MIDI. Universal Audio, how are we supposed to access 100 rigs in live situations without MIDI? Via the two foot switches? Well, pretty complicated. It works with both instrument and line level signals and, as I said previously, it does not contain the speaker load or power attenuator of the original OX amp top box which obviously allows Universal Audio to keep down dimensions, weight and price, compared to the OX box. So, this pedal is pretty nice and packed of features. The only cons I would mention are the missing MIDI controllability, that would be super nice to be able to integrate the pedal in a modern ampless pedal board and to take full advantage of the 100 rigs available. Second cons, the price, which is more than 400 bucks, so pretty expensive. And finally, the missing power supply. I mean, the pedal needs 400 milliamperes and the power supply is not included in the box, but it is sold separately. An interesting unit entering a very crowded market at a pretty high price. What do you think? Are you willing to pay so much money for an IR loader? Please let me know in the comment section below. A leaked image of a new amp modeling pedalboard from Hot Tone has emerged from the web. The new pedalboard should be the Ampero stage and this is an image of the leaked unit. Now, we don't know if this is gonna be an actual product or just fake, but for sure the design is interesting. Let's guess together the features. Judging from the image, it should have balanced and unbalanced stereo outputs, a mono effect loop, which could be stereo if Oton is using TRS cables, a dual input and an input for an external controller or expression pedal. Then we have 8 foot switches and I guess the same touchscreen available in the Ampero. If the touchscreen is the same of the regular Ampero and considering the missing volume pedal, the dimension should be similar to the regular Ampero, so it should be fairly small. The color recalls me the Ampero Stomp 2, therefore I really hope that in terms of sounds and features it is similar to the Ampero Stomp 2. This hypothesis should be confirmed by the photo as it seems to be written CD CM HD Gen 2, exactly like in the Ampero Stomp 2. I hope for an improved DSP processor to allow for an improved latency time and for more complex signal chains before the DSP goes out of power, but this seems not confirmed by the photo. In fact, if we look at the top of the unit, we can notice a writing similar to the one of the Ampero Stomp 2. I mean, 3-core DSP. Actually, in terms of DSP, 
ADA conversion, etc., it seems exactly the same as the Ampero Stomp 2, which is great on one side, as the Ampero Stomp 2 sounds great, but a little bit of a bummer on the other side, as I would have preferred more processing power. Nevertheless, I think this is a great addition to the Autone Ampero line of pedal boards, with an interesting form factor. Of course, the price is going to be very important for the success of the unit. And uh, if it is going to be around 500 bucks, I think it can really be a winner for Hot Tone. And now let's describe the Edrush Core. This is the second product from Edrush in their new lineup of pedal boards, where the first unit was the Prime. I think Edrush is following the schema used for their first lineup. I mean, the first unit to enter the market was the Edrush pedalboard, which is now the Prime, then the Jigboard, which is now the Core, and then the MX-5, which counterpart is still missing in the new lineup. But I guess it will be the next unit that is gonna be released by Edrush. The first thing I notice is that the price schema is now pretty odd. I mean, for the first lineup, we had three units in three pretty different price ranges and with clear competitors and market segments in mind. Now, for the first two units in the new lineup, the prices are pretty close in my opinion and actually a B-Stock Prime could be priced pretty similarly to the new core, as you can see from these units available at Toman. We have to wait and see the last unit missing in the new lineup, I mean the MX-5 counterpart, but so far I think that the price is a much less deciding factor compared to the old lineup. With the new lineup, the features and technical characteristics are, in my opinion, much more important to be evaluated than the price. So here the question is, what are the differences versus the Prime? In terms of I.O., the core has an XLR mic input with phantom power, a guitar input, an aux in, an headphone out, a stereo FX loop via TRS cables for integrating external FX pedal or to use the four cable method with our existing amps. We then have two expression pedal inputs and an output to toggle channels or turn reverb on and off of an external amplifier. It has balanced XLR outputs with switchable ground lift, two TRS outputs switchable between amp or line level, MIDI input and output. So basically the unit is identical to the Prime, which does not offer anything more or less compared to the core. The unit offers five foot switches and three control knobs, which are significantly less than the ones offered by the Prime, which also has customizable OLED scribble strip display screens over each foot switch, something missing in the core. In terms of software and the functionalities, the Prime and the core are identical. Among the main new features offered by the core and the Prime, I would mention first a vocal processor with Antares auto-tune algorithms, second an amp capturing features following the trend of the moment where basically profiling is becoming a must-have feature in this type of devices. Furthermore, it has a direct Wi-Fi connection to the Edrush cloud for clone sharing, preset sharing and firmware updates. It also offers Bluetooth audio connectivity for playing along with mobile devices and a 7-inch touchscreen but no computer app. It can serve as a 6x4 USB audio interface at up to 24 bits and 96 kHz. In terms of dimensions and weight, the unit is significantly smaller and lighter compared to the Prime. And this is a noticeable pro, in my opinion, as the Prime is really big and heavy. Among the cons I would mention, first, the cab section is pretty poor where basically you cannot change the position of the mic across the cab, but only if it is on axis or not, which is a bummer. I mean, Line 6 and Fractal has invested a lot in the cabinet simulation, for instance with the Line 6 firmware 3.5. And here, in the core, a new unit, we have a pretty primitive cab simulation, which is almost unacceptable, in my opinion, at this price range. 
Then, as far as I understood, as I said, there is no computer app available. As you know, in home recording situation, I think it is better to have everything on the screen of our computer, instead of having to reach out to the pedal board to change a parameter. Finally, the price. I mean, I think it's too close to the prime, not offering something really more affordable compared to its bigger brother, the prime. All in all, I would say that no feature is particularly groundbreaking here. What is interesting is the overall amount of features and versatility of the unit. Please let me know your opinions in the comment section below. And now let's talk about another leak which is all over the web. Fender is about to release a new amp modeling pedal board which is called Fender Tone Master Pro. The images and the description of the unit were on some online shops reporting both the features and the price of the unit. And well, this unit is not cheap, not cheap at all. Let's describe it. It offers 100 amps and effects. So here I expect the number of amps to be around 30. And it is gonna be interesting to see what amps are gonna be offered. You know, Fender offering Marshall amps sound strange and interesting at the same time. It is not clear if you are gonna be able to profile amps. What we know for sure is that the unit uses the same amp modeling technology used in the Tone Master amps, which is pretty good. Then we have thousands of built-in impulse responses and the possibility to load our own IRs. In terms of user interface, it seems pretty similar to the Quad Cortex, having a 7 inches touch screen and the foot switches that are also rotary knobs, like the Quad Cortex. Over the foot switches, we have pretty nice LCD scribble strips, and this is something not offered by the Quad Cortex, and that is nice. The IOs are pretty impressive, as we have a mic XLR input, a guitar input, four loops, which is very nice, XLR balance outputs, and two couples of unbalanced stereo outputs, an aux in, a headphone now, tunnel controller inputs, and an output to control an amp, input and output MIDI ports, an input for a micro SD card and a USB-C port. In the spec we can read firmware updates over USB, but nothing is written about its audio interface capability. So we don't actually know if the unit can serve as an audio interface. As I said, the unit offers a touchscreen and also a computer app. Fortunately, a Drush, Neural DSP, have you heard? Touchscreen and also computer app. We can also stream audio connecting an external device via Bluetooth. The dimensions are the ones shown in the screen and it should weigh four kilos. So it's not light even because it has the power supply built in, which is similar to the FM3 and different from the Quad Cortex that has an external power supply. And lastly, the price, which should be around 1,800 euros and 2,350 dollars. And the unit should be available since the end of September, beginning of October. So this is gonna be even more expensive than the Quad Cortex. Now, if we take a look at the Thoman best-selling amp modeling pedal boards, we can notice that the Quad Cortex despite its price, is still the best-selling unit after more than two years since its release. This means that the we guitarists are okay to pay big money for our amp simulations. I mean, we are keen to pay for the quality. The only problem here is that basically we don't know. I mean, when the Quad Cortex was released, Neural DSP had already released pretty good quality plugins. And so we knew that they have the knowledge to build a very good device. And yet we had to wait a lot of time to have, for instance, a looper. And we are still waiting for the computer app. I mean, a new unit requires time and dedication and many firmware upgrades to mature and reach the level of what Fractal, Boss or Line 6 are now offering. So here the question is if we can pay big money for a new platform not knowing how much Fender is going to invest in future firmware upgrades and how mature is going to be the software. Fender is of course a big name, so we can expect an appropriate 
effort to develop the unit but who knows please let me know your opinions in the comment section below and for sure this is a unit i want to bring to the channel i'm curious to listen fender miami king and marshall friedman has released a new dual channel tube preamp called irx one channel is voiced for the plexi british amp tone and the other one produces friedman's signature high gain voices found in the BE amps. The pedal combines a full analog circuit based on two 12AX7 tubes with the DSP based impulse response cabinet simulation technology and power amp simulation, mimicking the presence and the thumb digitally. Each channel has gain, bass, middle, treble, volume and boost knobs. There are three foot switches that can be used to select the two channels and to activate the boost. Furthermore, we have a three-way bright switch for the channel 1 and a two-way tight switch for the channel 2. In terms of I.O., the unit features a serious FX loop and a built-in DSP IR speaker simulation on balanced out in order to use the unit with a DO or a mixing desk. Then we have an headphone output, a MIDI and a USB port, plus a ground lift switch. The unit cannot serve as audio interface, but a USB port is used to connect the unit to a computer and to use the Friedman software. The software allows us to load IRs and tweak the unit power amp simulation via the thump and presence controls. We can also save the setting in 128 MIDI presets. Furthermore, the IRX includes 12 Dave Friedman's favorite cabinet IRs as standard. The preposition cab IR select switch per channel is programmable via the software and if we want we can bypass the cabinet simulation. A 12 volt power supply is included in the box together with the USB 2 cable. The price is pretty high at 600 euros and 500 dollars. What I found interesting in this pedal is the approach. I mean, here we are mixing analog and digital together in order to maximize the quality of the tone and response and to minimize the size, weight and price. The preamp is all analog where the power amp and cabinet have been digitalized. The resulting unit is also pretty simple and straightforward to be used. Its main competitors are the 2 Note Revolt and the Victory V4, which are both cheaper. The strength of the Friedman unit, in my opinion, is that it is an all-in-one unit, where with the Victory and the, the Revolt you need a cabinet simulation, even if the Revolt has just one IR included. On the other hand, the Revolt offers a wider variety of tones with three channels, so I would say that it really depends on your needs and how much money you want to spend. Please let me know your opinions in the comment section below. That's all for the today video. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye.